In our first story, President John Mahama has downplayed the NPP's campaign promise of one village, one dam in the northern part of the country. Addressing a rally on Sunday at Bolgatanga in the Upper East Region, President Mahama said the NPP has not made it clear the kind of dams they intend to construct. Upper East Region correspondent Albert Sori filed this report on day one of the president's three-day campaign tour of the region. President Mahama first addressed a rally at the capital, Bogatanga, where anxious party supporters had been waiting for him all afternoon. A major point of criticism of President Mahama's government by the opposition New Patriotic Party has been the NDC's seeming neglect of the Upper East region in terms of development. However, in his address at Polgatanga on Sunday, President Mahama painted a good picture of what his government has done for the Upper East region and proceeded to make more promises of developing the region if his government is maintained in power. And I want to assure my brothers and sisters of the Upper East region that work has commenced on the Bulga Boku Road. The contractor has mobilized to site. We have the funding, and so when work starts, it's not going to stop because we have the funding. As the contractor works, he will be paid. It's going to be a first class road between Bulga and Boko. And as we have written in our manifesto, I have promised that the five remaining regions that do not have up-to-the-date state-of-the-art sports stadia are going to be given sports stadia. So, Bogatanga, as the capital of the Upper East region, is going to get a stadium like we built in Cape Coast, a brand new sports stadium. President Mahama also downplayed the MPP's campaign promise of one village, one dam in the northern part of the country, saying the idea lacks clarity. He touted the NDC's achievements when it comes to constructing irrigation dams. My brothers and sisters, some people say they will do one something, one something, one something, one something. One village, one dam. And I asked them a simple question. I said, well, what dam are you talking about? Until now, they've not been able to describe the dam. We are engaged in establishing irrigation dams for dry season agriculture so that our farmers can have water to work all the year round. That one village, one dam they are talking about are dugouts. Dugouts are not dams, they are not irrigation dams. They are meant for watering livestock. When we were, when we didn't have water, that's where we used to drink. Now with the dugouts is our livestock that use it. What you are looking for is viable water sources, running streams and rivers that you can dam and create a, a, a dam behind it so that it can be used for irrigation purposes. The president went on to accuse the new patriotic party of being discriminatory towards people from the northern part of the country. He also accused the NPP flag bearer Nane Kufuado of being intolerant towards people within the NPP who disagree with him. It is a pity, but today our brothers have a lot of problems, internal problems, within their party. And that is why the people of Ghana cannot hand over political party to them, uh, political power to them. Because a house divided upon itself cannot stand. If you cannot create the internal cohesion within your own party, it is very difficult to hand the power of leadership of a whole country into your hands. You must cure your own internal divisions first. And when you have cured them, then Ghanaians can have the confidence to give power to you. But when you are divided, 
Half of the party is sitting somewhere. The leader too is going somewhere with the other half. They don't know where he's going to. It is dangerous to put political party, uh, political power in such a situation. But I am confident that the people of Ghana are discerning and they will vote wisely. We must also extend our condolences to the family of Elijah Ademu who was killed in an acid attack. I wish his wife and his family well and will continue to pray for his soul. There is no place in our political environment for this kind of violence. And those who preach violence will be consumed by that violence. Ours is a peaceful political party. We believe that the will of the people must be done and that no amount of political power is worth the blood of one single Ghanaian. You cannot shed the blood of the people that you want to come and rule. And that is why I will always admonish our supporters. You must not be provoked. People will attempt to provoke you. But don't worry. People have diverse opinions. Sometimes when I'm passing, I see a group of our fellows winding their hands like this, and I wave at them. They are Ghanaians. I'm their president. continue to be their president by the grace of God. Whether they agree with me or they don't agree with me, whether they are in MPP or CPP or NDC or PPP or NPPPPP, whatever P, I am your president. The president is next expected to visit the Boku and Chiana Paga areas. Now, Kam has returned to the eastern regional town of Asokore in the new Jabin municipality uh, following a violent clash between supporters of the two main political parties, incumbent NDC and opposition NPP, yesterday. Johnny sources say the supporters clashed when their paths crossed during a health walk led by the parliamentary candidate of the two parties. Cause of supporters are said to have been injured in the wake of the attack that also resulted in the destruction of vehicles and other properties. Reports indicate that the supporters pelted stones at each other at some point. It took police reinforcement to clear the confusion and break up the violent attacks. Joe News sources reveal Sunday's clash uh, comes exactly a week after a similar incident at the residence of the leader of the opposition MPP, Nana Adodanka Akofuado. In that incident, the security detail of the MPP leader fired warning shots allegedly to ward of the NDC supporters said to be pelting stones and bottles. The new Jabi municipality, along with four other constituencies in the eastern region, in Koko, Akwetia, Suhum, New Jabi South, and Akwapim South, are among the violence flashpoints ahead of the 2016 elections. Let's speak to the public relations officer of the police in the eastern region, ASP Yao in Ketia Yabua. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you for joining us. So we've lost Mr. Yawin Katiyawa on the line now. He speaks for the police in the eastern region. But the story is that Kam has returned to the town of Asokore after yesterday's clash between the supporters of the NDC as well as the NPP. And remember that this is not the first time such a thing has happened. Last week, there was another clash at the residence, Nima residence, of the leader of the opposition NPP, Nana Adodanko Akofwado, where NDC supporters who were on on a route march allegedly stopped at the residence of the flag bearer of the opposition New Patriotic Party and according to sources uh, they started pelting stones at people in the residence of the NPP's uh, flag bearer. We also understand that the NPP security detail also fired gunshots to ward off these supporters. I, I have on the line now with me ASP Yawin Ketiayabwa. He speaks for the police in the eastern region to give us the latest on what happened in Asokore. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you for joining us. Great. So you're still here on News Desk on Joe News on Morty TV. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll bring you more.
Tuesday Realty brings you Nyamidia City. Located five minutes from the Temamotori runabout on the Pam Pram Road, Nyamidia City is a gated community with infrastructure amenities like schools, clinics, and supermarkets. It also has a 24-hour power backup and 24-hour security. Sethi Realty is offering a special promotion. Early buyers get fully furnished homes at no extra cost. Yes, you heard me, fully furnished homes. Call now on 0244-311540 or 0555-188906 or visit us at www.sethirealty.com or facebook.com slash Sethi Realty. It's more than a Yeah, welcome back to News Desk on Joy News. And I, I was telling you earlier about the clash between supporters of the NPP and NDC in Asokore in the Eastern Region, also following another health walk there yesterday. I have on the phone lines with me the Public Relations Officer of the Police in the Eastern Region, ASP Yawin Ketia Iyabwa. Well, good morning to you, sir. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Ms. Anketia Iyabwa. All right, let's move on to some other stories whilst we try to uh, correct that line to ASP Yawin Ketiayabwa in the Eastern Region. Now, political parties in the Upper West Region have pledged to ensure that the country has a peaceful poll in December. According to them, the ultimate of all political parties standing for election is to develop the country and not to destroy it. They made the statements after signing to a peace uh, cloth present to them, members of Women's Situation Room of Ghana in Wai. Rafik Salam reports. The Women's Situation Room of Ghana is a women's peace building mechanism that is set up to mitigate conflict before, during, and after the election. It is a nonpartisan process that mobilizes women in collaboration with the youth to engage with stakeholders to support the women's call for peaceful election. Over 1,000 women from the various political parties, religious organizations, civil society organizations, and the Ghana Federation of the Disabled took part in a peace march and one ran some principal streets in the Wai municipality. They also visited the regional party offices of the various political parties for their executives to append their signature to the peace cloth and also pledge their party's commitment to ensuring that the country has a peaceful pool. Kate Bobbilla is the upper West chair of Women's Situation Room of Ghana. As women, we suffer most with our children. Upper West Regional Chairman of the MPP, Abubakar Abdul Rahman Short, who signed the peace cloth on behalf of his party, pledged to work assiduously to ensure that there is peace in the December polls. We want to give you all the affordable that for us in the MPP, we cherish peace and we will ensure that there will be violence whatsoever from our end. We hope that it will be like that for all the political parties in this country. We are one people. We are related. We have one Ghana. So there is no point to take up arms because of the lessons. We will never do that. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wa.
Let's return to our earlier story about the clashes at, at Sokore in the eastern region. ASP Yawin Ketiayabwa speaks for the police in that region. He joins us live on the line. Let's try one more time. Hello, Mr. Nketiayabwa. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. So what is the latest uh, at, at Sokore now? What's the situation now, as of this morning? Oh, um, the situation now normalized. In fact, the whole uh, yesterday and night, the patrol team all our attention was on our Sokori because there was the suspicion that there could be a retaliatory attack. So, um, so far, so good. Mm. And we, we have information that yesterday uh, both the NDC and the NPP did not use the approved route. Um, ha have you arrested any in, in the clashes at all? Uh, 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 first of all, I want to uh, do this uh, so that uh, none of the two uh, uh, will bring the police. They are, they are, they are, my attention has been drawn to some justifications. So you, since police were investigating to know who had the right to go who, who disobeyed the law, uh, I will leave that one out uh, without even saying anything. But there, there's evidence, there should be, there's evidence of the discussion on the rules to be used and where not to use to avoid such occurrence due to uh, what uh, a crash that nearly erupted about three weeks ago. So I will leave uh, that out and say that even and even add that should somebody even use uh, unapproved route, which um, there's no need to cause harm to the person or cause damage to people's vehicles and all those things. So the NPC and PP supporters should be law abiding. Uh, instead of always trying to blame for We understand that a number of people were injured. Are you able to tell us how they are doing and if we've been able to even identify any at all? Oh, yes. Um, they are doing very well. For the lack of time, uh, I would, uh, I'm not in the position to mention them, but they are 10 in number. I've seen that uh, they are, their age range is from 18 to uh, 31. Uh, one one female of 19 years, Salama to uh, Ibrahim, and the rest are all girls. Responding, uh, she, Idris uh, Mohammed, Yabuatin. We have all we all the ten have been accounted for by the police, who have been treated and discharged from the Saint Joseph Orthopedic uh, Hospital in Kofodia. By the grace of God, there's no uh, fatality. Um, so all the 10 were treated and discharged yesterday. ASP, yesterday we understand there was a regional security council meeting. What was the outcome of that meeting? There could be, but uh, um, I must uh, sorry to say that I'm not a member, so I, will, I may not know. I may <laughs> not know. Or unless maybe when commanders are going, they alert me or by per chance. But there could be because looking at the situation, in fact, the whole, I, I came back to the office for him this, uh, so, so to, to prepare for all of you. Mm. So you can just imagine. And the commander for the past 40, 24 hours, that is uh, for Korea, the one uh, that's uh, Fijasi, uh, Fijasi, Kittes for Yoko, uh, so Korea. The whole, he was on set the whole, uh, almost 20 hours. So no, nobody, they haven't allowed anybody to rest because uh, of uh, this avoidable cash. Mm. Thank you, ASP Nketiah Yabua. But one other thing I want to talk about, yes, we, we, I asked you the question earlier on that, about two, uh, the two groups not following the route. How come your men were unable to control them, which led to the clashes yesterday? Um, I always tell the Ghanaians that when people decide that they don't want to obey the law, there's little law enforcement officers can do. So um, people should be law abiding and also accommodating, more importantly, because if if we are that is uh, Ghanaians, if we we are by nature accommodating, it, in such circumstances that should come to the fore for everybody to see. But whereby 
People take the law into their own hands. People don't respect the law and its uh, members of the, the security forces. Such things could happen. Had not been the fact that the reinforcements from uh, Kufodia Central District and the regional police headquarters were able to mobilize and go there quickly. It, it could have been very, very fatal. This crash would have been very, very fatal. If you look at it, 10 wounded, uh, even uh, then. So um, they should all help us, the election security task force and our personnel to police this election without uh, any uh, search on such incidents. So um, uh, your question is that uh, your answer, short answer to your question is that everybody should be law abiding and play his, his, his or her rule uh, according to law. There's no law in Ghana that allows anybody to go scot free when during political party activities you harm or you wound or you cause damage to somebody's property. Unfortunately, when a Ghanaian is reporting a case, you say uh, MPP maybe, NDC maybe, a crime. Instead of saying uh, uh, a person who has wounded me, he will not say that. He will rather see the person in political color. But the crime is crime. And this is what uh, will take place. So when we started sending people to court, so when we started sending people to court. Um, so, um, and we believe, we believe that uh, uh, when sending them to court begins, uh, law will come. And Ghanaians will uh, start being more law abiding. Thank you very much. ASP Yawin Katia Yaboa, he speaks for the police in the Eastern region. And, and speaking of campaigns, we know that the NPP presidential candidate Nana Adudankwa Kufuado has wrapped up his tour of the Volta region. Fred Kwame Asare is following him and he joins us live on the line. Fred, tell us what happened. Uh, yesterday's rally uh, was the first of regional rally that the NPP uh, will be holding uh, nationwide. And the, yesterday's rally was that Volta from team and it was on the team, the role of the Volta area and agenda for job. So it's actually um, a regional rally that will be held in all regions in the country, and not uh, Nanakufado going on a tour. So uh, it was a mammoth rally, and then it was held at Aplau Avoyne, just in the uh, Ketu South constituency of the region. And then I must say that uh, the NPP uh, is continuing to enjoy a very good reception in the region, uh, which is described as the electoral uh, World Bank of the um, NDC. And then yesterday's program, uh, the Independent People's Party, the flag of the Independent People's Party, that, um, Kofi Akpalu also joined Nana Akufuado and the NDP uh, at the rally ground. And then Nana Ado came to uh, the Mammoth crowd. He mentioned that uh, he wouldn't uh, see or... Seems we've lost Fred Kwame Asari on the line there, but I think his point has been made. And Fred Kwame Asari report for Joy News from the Volta region. Meanwhile, the NPP in that region is also alleging that they have information to release nationals are being uh, organized to vote in this year's uh, polls. Peter Amewu is the chairman there and he joins us live on the line. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you for joining us. Hello. Hello, Mr. Amewu. Can you hear us? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. we're thinking how much to do it. This is Joy News, sir. Joy News? Yes. Is it a live program? This is Joy News, desk, sir. Hello. Yeah, good morning. Yes, good morning. My name is Beatrice Edu. This is Joy yeah. News, desk. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for of joining course. us. Thank you. Great. Good so morning to your listeners. Yeah. You, the MPP in the Volta region is the legend that uh, some people are being mobilized from Togo, who are not Ghanaian, uh, who are who are not Ghanaian nationals, to, to vote in this year's polls. Do you have any evidence to this uh, allegation? Well, yes, I think we have more than uh, sufficient evidence to to the allegations. Uh, 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 what we are saying is that uh, we are not against any. Ghanaian nationals living in the Republic of Togo to come and exercise 
he's going to hear democratic franchise in the Republic of Ghana. We are not against that at all. What we're standing against is that there are certain names still there in that register that are 100% to go late. And our point of argument is that as far as Ghanaians do not determine the presidency of the Republic of Togo, it's unfair for those 100% Togolese to determine who become a president in the Republic of Ghana. Of course, if I should become a president in Ghana, and my presidency is determined by other people, not including the citizens that I'm expected to govern, of course, I will not be very comfortable. And, and, and so our point of argument is that we have set up an operation called an operation Eagle Life, uh, which is not any aggressive mechanism, but a relationship building instrument to make sure that these issues are explained to our neighbors in Togo. What it binds Ghana and Togo together is a, is a social relationship and free relationship. You know, since the colonial era where we have uh, had a country named Ghana from Togo, uh, a clear demarcation says who a Togo is and who a Togolese is and who a Ghanaian is. And so our point of argument is we will not allow 100% to go to exercise their rights. Mr. As I speak to you, go I'm ahead, aware, sir. about two days ago, the original command of the place moved around the whole of the immigration uh, in uh, Volta region, telling the immigration officers uh, that they should open up the border uh, 24 hours. Uh, you know, and allow every citizen, you know, to come into Ghana to... to Mr. Pay. Mayor, are you aware, are you aware that there are Ghanaians who live in Togo and probably would want to I come... I am aware, I am aware. I'm and is aware. that what you have a problem with? I have no problem with any Ghanaians living in Togo coming to exercise their rights. Those Ghanaians in Togo even coming to exercise their rights are even complaining of the economic difficulties they are facing in Togo because of the difficulties that... That are increasing. The overflow from Ghana is not reaching them. So, so who, so who are, are you are saying? Are going to vote for it. So who are you saying the are not Ghanaians? But... Are against, uh, Togolese nationals. We are not against Ghanaians living in Togo. Not at all. Nobody will drive away any or do anything and talk to any Ghanaian living in Togo uh, from exercising his rights in Ghana. Not at all. We will not do that. What we're trying to explain to our friends and brothers in the Republic of Togo is that those Togolese who for some reason find their way into the register because of free beef, you know, cattle fertilizers, insecticides, rules that were given to them by the NDC uh, to lure them to register during the registration process. These are people that we are talking to. So and we are in close contact with them. And some of them have admitted it. So we are discussing and we are making sure that they do not come. Please. So, Mr. Mewu, you are claiming that you have evidence of... To Togolese who want to vote in this year's elections. Have you submitted this evidence to the Electoral Commission moving forward? Well, we will do that as we move along. We have 15 days to the elections. When do you intend to do that? Well, you you, you hear from me as, as, as soon as time allows. All right, thank you very much, Peter, you, John Peter right, Mewu. He right, is the yeah. Voter Regional Chairman of the NPP, uh, telling us about what evidence uh, he claims the NPP has regarding Togolese nationals who want to vote in this year's elections. Let's stay on politics. And President John Mahama rounded his campaign tour of the Upper West region by commissioning the Lambusier Community Senior High School. Even though the event was heavily attended, conspicuously missing were the people of Connie who boycotted the event due to the disagreement they had over the change in the name of the Lambusia District Assembly. An Accra High Court in August this year granted the wish of a citizen of Lambusia who filed a suit for the Assembly to change its name from Lambusia Connie to Lambusia District Assembly. Following the ruling, the relationship between the two dominant ethnic groups in the district who hitherto were living peacefully became frosty to resolve the disagreement. Amic President Mahama bemoaned the boycott of the event, saying that these are issues that can be settled amicably. Rafik Salam reports. The Lambuse Community Day Senior High School is the first of eight Community Day Senior High Schools to be commissioned by President John Dramani Mahama in the Upper West Region, where they rest at various stages of completion. The beautiful, magnificent edifice is situated a couple of kilometers from the heart of Lamuse, 
and has already admitted a little over 80 students as its first badge. Deputy Minister for Education Samuel Okujoto Ablakwa stated that the commissioning of the Community Day School is a testimony of the president being a father for all. That apart from this Lambosier Community Day Senior High School, Logo Senior High School is also ready for commissioning in the Upper West region. The Kanjariga Community Day School is also ready for commissioning in the Upper East region. And on Monday, God willing, His Excellency the President will be commissioning that as well. In the Northern region, the Saboba Community Day School is also ready. And there are a number of community day schools that are ready. So those who had doubts about the president's ability to deliver these senior high schools in all 10 regions in Ghana, he is a father of all regions. And he does not leave any region out so far as his development agenda is concerned. President John Dramani Mahama noted that the commissioning of the school will enable several children whose education will have been truncated to have access to secondary education. As part of our efforts to expand public secondary education opportunities, the Ministry of Education has from 2013 to date absorbed seven private schools into the public school system, bringing the number of public senior high schools in the Upper West region to 26. And therefore, when we deliver all the eight schools we are working on, the number of public senior high schools in the region will increase from 26 to 34. The capacity of public secondary education would also have been increased by more than 10,000 places. Government sees equitable expansion of access to education as important because we consider second cycle education as a critical bridge that connects basic education to tertiary education and ultimately to the world of work. Even though the ceremony was heavily attended but conspicuously missing, where the people of Kane who boycotted the event because of their disagreement over the changing name of the Lamusia District Assembly. President Mahama expressed regret for their inability to join them at the event and call on the people to work to resolve the dispute amicably. We cannot let simple things like this divide us. As president, I'm going to initiate an amicable resolution of this issue. I think that we can live together. We are the same people. We have the same cultures. I cannot tell the difference between a Kani man and a Lambosie man. You're all the same. Unless you open your mouth and you speak, I can't tell the difference between you. And so let us resolve these issues amicably. I'm going to make an effort so that we can resolve this matter. Due to the numerous developmental projects that he has bequeathed to the people, President Mahama was enskinned by the Lambosie Kuru, Kuru Salifu Dieka, as the Tor Ose Kuru, meaning development chief. Important for the news, Rafik Salam, Lamuse. You're also watching News Desk on Joy News on Morty TV. Manuel Abuajiri Afe will join us shortly with the latest in business when we come back. You're watching News Desk on Joy News. Now, the Electoral Commission has published what it calls the Tax for Security Forces with just 15 days to this year's general elections. The EC in the report forbids security officials from, for example, checking the ID cards of voters. The EC explained that at least the security person is required to maintain order at a polling station and work under the directives of the presiding officer who is the ultimate authority at the polling station. The EC also says it is the duty of the security officers to escort election materials to the polling stations, maintain law and order during polling, counting and escort results and other electoral materials to the collation center. The security officer is also required to ensure 
ensure that all election materials are safe and secure. To this end, they must escort or guard the materials where necessary. According to the EC, it is also the responsibility of the security officer to maintain law and order at a collation center. And the security officers are also mandated to ensure that the queue of the voters is orderly. And that'll be all for News Dex today. But just to tell you that we are unable to bring you the Ghana's oil and gas industry, uh, which is supposed, the Joy FM Thought Leadership Program, uh, which is supposed to take place. We're supposed to pick it live. We are unable to bring you that now, but we'll bring it to you later in this, on this particular station. And that's all for News Dex today. For more news, log on to myjoyonline.com. My name is Beatrice Adu. Thank you so much for joining us.